Hey, it's Steve Lindsley. Welcome back to my shop. This is part two of our segmented uh, turning videos. We're going to go sh finish showing how we uh, put our segmented turning together and finished it up. Uh, we got through part of it in the in the first video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and finish it up in this one. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, this video so far. So please stay tuned and I'll show you how I finished up this uh, segmented turning. All right, well, here's the bottom assembly on the lathe. Uh, the feature ring is just being held on at this point with some double stick tape. I didn't want to glue it on yet, so the goal here is to rough out the bottom shape. Cleaning up the outside is a little rough to do while it, the rings are still um, have all their edges on them like this, these do. Uh, you just kind of keep working at it and knock the corners off the uh, the rings and eventually it gets down to the point where it's uh, a little bit easier to turn but it's kind of a little little rough going when you first start out. What I need to do here is turn the bottom bloodwood ring down to closer to final dimension. I'm going to leave it a little, about a quarter of an inch uh, larger than the finished uh, uh, diameter, but we need to get it closer so we can continue to shape the outside of this vessel. Well, now that I got that bloodwood ring turned down to uh, closer to final dimension, I can go back to my half inch bowl gouge and start uh, shaping the outside of this vessel again. Well here I'm going to use the bowl gouge as a scraper uh, because we're turning all side grain on this segmented vessel it, it scrapes pretty easy and is an easy way to clean up some of the uh, bumps and valleys that I have in the, uh, in the turning at this point. What I do here is to blend in the feature ring with the, uh, the rest of the vessel. I'm using a scraper. I found that that works pretty good. I did get a little bit of tear out around the portholes when I was using the bowl gouge, so the scraper works pretty good to clean that up. Uh, try not to be real aggressive, uh, just to make sure nothing goes haywire at this point. Uh, it's just a rough turn since the bowl is the feature ring is not actually glued on. I separated the feature ring from the bottom of the vessel. Uh, I used a little bit too much double stick tape and it was a little, it was a little hard to get off, but uh, eventually I, I got it to come loose. Uh, I turned the inside of it using my bowl gouge. Um, here I'm just cleaning it up with a uh, heavy scraper. Uh, uh, I'll show turning the inside of the top here, but it, it was just a matter of turning it down to uh, about three-eighths of an inch and then cleaning the uh, 
cleaning the inside of the vessel up with this uh, with this scraper, which is a, a negative rake scra rake scraper, so it works pretty good cleaning the uh, inside. But the burr doesn't last very long, so you spend a lot of time at the grinder. Here I'm getting ready to sand the inside of our project uh, using a drill with a sanding pad and a 3 inch uh, scalloped edge sanding disc. I started with 80 and went to 120, 180, 220 and 320. Uh, 320 was the final grip for the inside and the outside of the project. Uh, this is the only sanding I'm going to show because it was the process was pretty much the, the same for the entire project. Well, I went ahead and glued the feature ring onto the bottom part of the vessel, and here I'm uh, cleaning up the outside edge of it to get ready for the, to glue on the next ring. I, I did go ahead and finish the inside bottom part of the uh, of the vessel. Uh, I'll talk about the finish regimen here in a little while, but uh, it's just a matter of using a scraper to to get the to get the outside edge flat. Uh, just clean it up. Just spend a little couple minutes, and then take a ruler, make sure things are going flat, and then hit it with the sanding board and then it'll be ready to glue on the next ring. I need to make the inside of the feature ring round. Uh, I know how much I took off the other side uh, that I showed earlier when I when I did that. So I just need to take off and basically put like a little rabbit on this side. It's the same uh, depth as the one on the other side. Uh, we don't want to turn through the bottom of the vessel or the feature ring. That would be pretty much a disaster. So we're going to carefully do that and then um, we'll go ahead and get ready to clean the rest of it up. So now it's just a matter of removing the waste between our, on the inside there. Uh, I'm using a half inch bowl gouge. Uh, it's important in this whole project to make sure you keep the tools sharp, so I spent a lot of time at the grinder. Uh, so we're using a nice sharp bowl gouge to clean up the inside of the vessel here. Well, I cleaned out most of the waste with the uh, bowl gouge. Now I'm just using this easy wood tool uh, to final shape the uh, inside transition between the bottom and the edge of the feature ring. Uh, the feature ring is thicker than the bowl wall, so you need to make a transition between the two of them. So it's just a matter of um, uh, cleaning that up with the, with the uh, easy wood tool and, and getting everything nice and flat. I have the top assembly uh, attached to the uh, feature ring with double stick tape. Uh, I didn't use as much this time as I did the last time, so hopefully this was a little bit easier to separate, which it turned out to be. Uh, so now it's just a matter of taking the bowl gouging and uh, shaping the top uh, to a rough shape. So I just spent some time doing that.
As I did with the bottom blood wood ring, I need to get this top one down to something close to the final dimension. I left it a, a little bit thick, maybe a, a eighth to three sixteenth of an inch thicker than a, the final turning is going to be. Now, the blood wood's pretty hard stuff, so it took me a little while to get it down to what I wanted it to be. Now that I have the blood wood down to something like close to the final dimension, di diameter, I can go ahead and use scrapers, gouges, uh, whatever it takes to finish shaping up the, uh, the top here. I'm using a scraper on the feature ring because I don't want to take the chance of tearing a, any of it out. Uh, it would be difficult to, to turn it out or repair it at this point. So just take it slow and easy and we'll get a good product. I'm spending quite a bit of time at that little maple ring at the bottom where the transition from the feature ring into the, the body of the vessel. It, it's kind of at that transition point and I didn't want it to be too wide. If, it, if you cut it too much of an angle, it would be too thick. So I spent some time trying to clean that up. I removed the bottom part of the vessel and feature ring and here I'm going to clean up the inside. I know the inside diameter of the feature ring, so I've marked that on this bloodwood ring, and I need to turn the inside so the inside diameters are the same. Uh, so when I put the vessel together, there's a, trans a nice transition or a nice mate between the, the top and the, uh, in the uh, feature ring. So that's what I'm doing here, just getting that down to where it needs to be for the inside diameter. Well, once that diameter, inside diameter of that uh, bottom ring there is uh, set, we can go ahead and just start removing stock from the inside of the uh, inside of the vessel. I got a lot to, to clean out here. I, I turned the uh, wall of the vessel down to three eighths of an inch uh, on the top and the bottom. Like I said earlier, the feature ring is thicker than that, and it needs to be thicker than that. But uh, everything else is turned down to three eighths of an inch. I use my little handy little tool there to measure the thickness of the uh, thickness of the walls. Once I got everything turned close with the, uh, the bowl gouge, I, I shifted to the uh, easy wood tool. This is the round cutter, the, the CI0, which is the larger round cutter. Uh, it's helping a lot to make that transition from the wall down into that uh, 
budwood ring that glues to the feature ring. That was a pretty severe curve on there. And that worked real well to get inside there and clean that out. Those are finishing uh, touches here. I'm just going to use the uh, the tool. It's kind of in a scraping motion and a little bit of an angle, and it just kind of takes off some fine shavings. So just go over it one last time and hopefully uh, get it ready for uh, some light sanding and some finish. With the lower part of this uh, upper piece finished, it's time to go after the uh, feature ring and the, uh, the top bloodwood rings and get them turned down to 3 eighths of an inch as well. So I'm continuing on with this uh, easy wood tool. Uh, it, it's a little bit easier to get in there than it is with the bow gouge, a little more control over it. So, uh, and it, it's not causing any tear out on the, uh, on the feature ring, which is good because it would be difficult to sand out at this point. I have the inside of our top of our uh, vessel uh, turned and sanded. I uh, powered sanded through uh, 320. I started with 80 and worked my way up through the grits to 320. Uh, we're going to use an oil finish on this project. A um, couple of uh, products we're going to use. One is I have a general finish a seal a cell, uh, which I'm going to put on first and seal up the inside. Uh, and then we're going to finish that with a couple of coats of uh, Armor Seal, which is an oil urethane uh, top coat. So those should lo look nice. So we're going to start with the um, seal of cell, which I'm going to get these out of the way. I have some in a little container here, and I'm just going to flood it on with a foam brush and then wipe off any excess, and then you let it dry, and then that's pretty much it. I'm just using this uh, foam brush, which is a one-inch foam brush. Every time I buy a multiple pack of foam brushes, I always have the one-inch one left over. So <laughs> we're going to use it on this. Uh, going to use it on this project. This stuff goes on pretty easy. Um, you just kind of flood it on, and then wipe, like I said, then wipe off the excess. So we're just going to go ahead and get some on it, and then wipe it off after. The oil will. Um, yellow a little bit over over time but that's fine that's kind of the the look i was going for with the um uh, maybe the maple turning a little bit darker over time and, and uh maybe making a making a vessel look a little bit older so we're gonna 
go with that. Well, this wood sure looks nice when you start putting some finish on it. One of my favorite parts of the project is putting the finish on so you can see what your your final product is going to look like. All right, we got quite a liberal coat on there. I don't want to get any on this uh, rim here where we're going to glue the glue the lid to the vessel. I will uh, hit that with the sanding block one more time before I um, glue the two halves together. So we got this cotton rag here. We're just going to wipe off any excess. Okay, there we go. That's all there is to that. So we'll just let that dry. I'll, I'll take it off the lathe and take it somewhere where it's a little less dusty and then we'll, uh, we'll be good to go once that dries and we can go ahead and um, get ready to uh, glue, the, uh, glue the two halves together. We got the two halves of the, of the vessel glued together and here I'm just using my negative rate scraper to blend in the feature ring transition to the bowl and to clean up any tear out around the portholes that I had left over from the gouge that I used earlier. So that's worked pretty well. I need to get this bottom bloodwood ring down to the final outside diameter. So I've taken a parting tool and got it close to what I need it to be. Now I'm just using a bowl gouge to remove any of the excess that was there and, and uh, get it down to its final shape. Well, after several trips to the grinder during that process, I finally got everything turned down and shaped to the, to the final shape that I was looking for, and I'm very happy with it so far. 
At this point, everything has been sanded through 320. Uh, I used a drill and a sanding pad. Now it's time to part off the uh, the top piece from the from the uh, waste block. Well, I turned it down as far as my nerves would take, <laughs> and I decided to just use a, a back saw to cut it the rest of the way off the bowl. Uh, I couldn't stand the, the thought of having it mess up at this point. Well, with the top piece removed, uh, it's running pretty true. It's in a little bit of wobble, but considering how far it's sticking out over the over the lathe, I'm not, I'm not shocked. Uh, we're going to use a negative rake scraper here, and, and I'm not going to get aggressive at all with this. I've come too far to mess this up, so we're just going to scrape and scrape some more and scrape till we get it to the shape that we want. I finally got this turned down to the shape I want, so I'm just going to do some hand sanding on it to get it uh, cleaned up and um, get it ready for finish. So I'm not going to power sand it or anything, just hand sanding is going to be the rule of the day. To support the top of the vessel, I went ahead and made a little cone out of uh, MDF, turned it a 60 degree angle with a hole drill to fit in the live center. So I just put that in the top and Put the live center on it and that holds the top steady while we go ahead and part the bottom off from the uh, from the waste block. To say I'm nervous at this point would be an understatement. So. <laughs> I was afraid of going too far, so what I did, I would, I would part it a little bit, and then I would take a back saw and saw a little bit and see if I sawed through the, that bottom ring, and if I didn't, I'd do a little bit more uh, with the parting tool, so I kept going with that process, so I got it down where the, the saw cut through, the, uh, cut through that bottom ring, and I knew where I was at that point. Well, hindsight being 2020, I, I thought later, or I realized later, I should have left that connected to the bottom waste block. It would have helped me center it up in the jig that I have uh, to finish the bottom. Uh, I was just anxious to go ahead and get it cut off and see what it what it looked like. And in reality, I should have just left it on. But oh well, it turned out right in the end. But certainly would have been a lot easier if I had just left that bottom waste block on. Here's the jig I used to uh, turn the bottom piece. Uh, it took me a little while to get it centered uh, so it was running true, but eventually I eventually I made it. It was a little bit of trial and error and took me a little while, but um, it actually worked pretty well once I got it running to, uh, running true on the, on the lathe, so it worked out all right. Well, after all the effort I have in this vessel at this point, there's no way I'm going to rush cleaning up the bottom of this uh, bloodwood. The bloodwood's uh, hard to turn, and the last thing I needed was a catch with a bowl gouge or something. So I'm just going to scrape and scrape some more, and then when I think I'm done, I'm going to scrape some more till I till I get it turned off. So we'll just uh, 
go ahead and do that and eventually it will uh, turn out the way we want it. Yeah, we're still scraping, so we're, we're making progress, but it's uh, slow going, but I'm not, uh, I'm resisting the urge to pick up a more aggressive tool and finish this thing off. So we're just going to keep at it till we get it finished. Yep, you guessed it. I'm still scraping. Uh, I got it down to... Uh, most of the waste removed, now I'm just kind of shaping up the bottom part of the, uh, the ring there. Well, this is finishing it off. I, I'm just putting a little uh, finishing touches on the bottom ring. I'll, I'll hand sand it and then we'll, it'll be ready for finish. So That was... Uh, it was a lot of effort to finish that bottom part off and it took me quite a bit of time but I, I think that was the safest way to do it if nothing else so there's a few little pieces that are kind of stuck on the inside there and I'm, I use my little uh, ruler as a little scraper to clean those out now this was the last piece uh, the last part of this of this video so uh, I didn't actually take a video of taking it out of the jig and standing up so what I'll do is I'll I'll put a couple of, of pictures up next so you can see what the final product looked like after uh, I got on uh, six coats of that um, uh, oil varnish, or that oil urethane that I showed earlier. So it came out with a nice satin finish. So we'll put those pictures up here next. All right, well, that's how I put this segmented vessel together. I hope you enjoyed watching the, uh, the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, the project. Uh, it's going to be around for a long time. I'm very proud of it, and I'm very happy with the, the way that it came out. Uh, so thanks, thanks for watching, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe.